Now that you know what happens when we point an IR thermometer straight up, can you figure out what would happen if we move the thermometer from the zenith to the horizon? Will the temperature increase or decrease? Hint. As the thermometer's angle toward the horizon, it's looking through a longer cone-shaped column of air. The air temperature is about 29 degrees Celsius. The temperature at the zenith is about minus 5 degrees Celsius. Halfway down to the horizon, the temperature is about 4 degrees Celsius. And near the horizon, the temperature is about 14 or 15 degrees Celsius. Here's why. Two things are happening. First, when you point the thermometer straight up, it measures the total infrared brightness of the sky, coming from all the layers of the atmosphere, extending from the Earth's surface to the edge of space. This is called the apparent or effective temperature. But, as the thermometer is pointed toward the horizon, the cone-shaped column of air gets longer, so the thermometer is seeing a greater number of water vapor molecules, which, when taken all together, have more energy. Second, nearly all of the air and water vapor in the atmosphere is packed below 10 kilometers thanks to the pull of gravity. Being closer to the Earth, these molecules receive more upwelling radiation from the warm ground. Both of these factors work together to raise the IR temperature of the air. Hooray for teamwork! With all the attention given to carbon dioxide these days, it's easy to forget that water vapor and cloud droplets together contribute from about 36 to 90 percent of the total greenhouse warming effect. That's why cloudy nights are usually warmer than clear nights and frost never forms under a thick overcast sky. The upwelling heat radiated by the ground at night warms the clouds. The absorbed energy is re-radiated as downwelling radiation and a significant portion is absorbed by the ground. This is easily and dramatically demonstrated by measuring the difference between clear sky and clouds. Drum roll, please. But Bill, there are no clouds today. Um, then I guess we'll have to wait. And wait. And wait. And wait. Look, there's a cloud. Wait. Clear sky temperature, minus 28 degrees Celsius. Cloud temperature. Positive 14 degrees Celsius, a 42 degree difference. Now, wasn't it worth waiting two days for this? And now, a cheesy demonstration. As you can see, clouds radiate a significant amount of IR energy. Let's take a closer look at this phenomena using our Microscale Static Model of the Atmosphere! A globe and a piece of insulation. Things are tough all over, kid. Oh, but it has pink clouds! How cuddly. At night, clouds act like an insulating blanket by slowing down heat loss from the Earth's surface. That's why windless, cloudy nights are warmer than calm, clear nights. But during the day, they can also block and reflect a lot of incoming UV radiation from the sun, anywhere from 30 to over 90 percent, depending on their optical density. So when thick clouds cover the sky during the day, they usually cool the Earth because the energy they reflect back to space is greater than the energy they radiate down towards the Earth. You, scientist! Here are two experiments you can do with an IR thermometer. Clouds form at different heights and vary considerably in thickness. Use an IR thermometer to measure different cloud temperatures directly overhead and a cloud chart to identify the cloud type and the estimated height. Be sure to point the thermometer straight up and shade the sensor from direct sunlight. Question. What is the relationship between cloud height and temperature? 
and between cloud thickness and temperature. If you don't have an IR thermometer, put it on your Christmas list. Only $39.99 on sale now. Here is another experiment you can try. Cumulus clouds with flat bases are formed by rising currents of warm, moist air on sunny days. The cloud's flat base marks the level at which the rising air cools to its dew point, causing the water vapor to condense. So, the IR temperature of a cloud base directly overhead should be fairly close to the dew point temperature at the Earth's surface. To find the current dew point temperature, check the internet for the nearest National Weather Service office or a nearby airport. Be sure that the clouds you measure are fairly large so that your thermometer is not measuring part of the sky temperature at the same time. Test it for yourself with the IR thermometer you're getting for Christmas. Only $39.99 on sale now. Just in case you forgot, our atmosphere acts like a kind of thermostat to moderate or even out the temperature by retaining heat. Greenhouse warming causes certain gases in the atmosphere to absorb and re-radiate long wave infrared radiation. The most important greenhouse gases are water vapor and carbon dioxide. You can detect and measure radiation from greenhouse gases in the air, especially water vapor, using an IR thermometer. When pointed straight up under a clear sky, the thermometer takes an average reading of the atmosphere called the apparent or effective temperature. This temperature correlates closely with the amount of water vapor in the atmosphere. Thick clouds radiate a significant amount of IR energy. At night, they act like an insulating blanket by slowing IR heat loss from the Earth's surface. But during the day, they cool the Earth by blocking and reflecting incoming UV radiation from the sun. Well, we figure that's about all you can stand of us today. But Bill, what about global warming? Yeah, Bill, what about global warming? I knew you would ask. Keep in mind that though the greenhouse effect is related to the question of global warming, it's not the same. The greenhouse effect was discovered long before global warming became a hot issue. And I have my little 1957 golden guide to weather to prove it. See? Earth is a greenhouse. But now that you know carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas and the level of carbon dioxide is rising due mostly to the burning of fossil fuels, the question is how much warming will the additional carbon dioxide cause and will it create a climate catastrophe? Of course we purposely tiptoed around these questions because we don't want to say anything controversial so people will like us. Plus, we need a topic for another show. If there is one. Bill, you're incorrigible. More! More! I want more! Okay, you can have more! To learn more about the greenhouse effect, check out these resources. And here are more cool experiments you can do with an IR thermometer. Satisfied? More! More!